we do mass modeling. So we, we collect data and we plot the data and the data takes a shape. And depending on the shape that the data takes, what we try to do is write an equation of the line. And so what we've been doing, uh, we started with linear and quadratic equations and now we're going to do power functions. But basically we transform the equation to make the line fit the data as best we can. So in example number one, and I'll just read it from your textbook, it says, the, uh, from empirical evidence, the laws of physics have been found, or has found, that the period of time t, so remember that t is time, for the full swing of a pendulum, Okay, so a pendulum swings back and forth. For the full swing of the pendulum varies as a square root of the pendulum's length. So provided with the uh, small relative, it's, uh, the swing is small relative to the length of the pendulum, express the relationship as a power function. So let me read that again. And we're, so basically, we want to say that the time of this thing is a function of the length of the pendulum, where this is the length and the time is the cycle it takes to complete. And it says here, let me read it again, from empirical evidence and the laws of physics, it has been found that the period of the time t for a full swing of a pendulum varies as the square root of the pendulum's length. So what they're saying is, is that it varies, which means it could be multiplied by some value, times the square root of the pendulum's length. And then it says, uh, write it as a power function, write the relationship as a power function. Well, I think I've done that, haven't I? Does that make sense? Now, I, I'm almost done. It says I have to write it as a power function. Technically, this is like a square root function. I mean, if we wanted to be real picky about it. So I want to write L as a power of something. So I would say K times L raised to what power? A square root is a variable raised to what power? Well, this is L to the first power. And square root, technically, is we're trying to undo the square. We never write down the square root. We never write down the, what, that's what's called the index of the root, um, which is 2. And if we did, we would know that it's L to the 1 over 2 because it's L to the first power, and then we're taking the second root of it. So technically, this is the answer. Okay? And so that's a power function. And we'll dive deeper into this, but... There's some significant things that I want to talk to you guys about. First of all, uh, my power is less than 1, okay? And it's positive. So it's really, technically, if I were to say this is written in the form y equals k x raised to the a, I would say that a is trapped between 0 and 1. And uh, that has an interesting shape. And so just keep that in mind because that's what we're going to look at. Right? So if the data fits uh, a power function, the only two things we could change in the power function are the constant multiplier, which you should know by now it's just going to vertically shrink or stretch um, the graph vertically. And then, and then what the value of the power itself is. That has a big impact on uh, the shape of the power function.